Hello, my name is Andiopi Koronaki, and I will be presenting our work on the structure and fabrication driven design of space frames. Space frames are lightweight structures with the ability to approximate doubly curved geometries. And of course, the challenge in designing them efficiently lies in the layout of the members and uh, in its optimization in order to minimize mass and to minimize geometrical variability in order to facilitate the fabrication and construction process. This is particularly relevant for the joints of the space frames, considering that they often account for a large percentage of the mass and uh, cost of the final structure. Of course, both of these topics have been studied in literature with uh, layout optimization methods being developed to minimize the material mass and geom geometry optimization methods being developed to minimize uh, fabrication complexity. Of course, in both of these cases, the main objective of the, of the optimization has been either structure or fabrication, and the other one has been applied as a post process. So building on this, the goal of this study is to develop a novel framework for the design of space frames uh, that performs a simultaneous multi-objective optimization to minimize material volume and uh, fabrication complexity, so geometrical variability. This is achieved uh, through a series of illustrative examples that aim to explore the relationship between the geometry and the respective fabrication and structure requirements. So initially, uh, a parabolic surface is designed to generate a series of uh, doubly curved surfaces. The top layer of the space frame uh, is designed through the projection of the subdivided pyramid faces as shown in the figure here. And then the parameters of the parabola are changed in order to create uh, nine different configurations of doubly curved surfaces. Uh, the bottom layer of the surface is formed by the hexagonal jewel of the top layer, and the depth is assigned through the use of a control surface. This allows us to reduce the number of variables that we're using and in effect reduce the design space of the solutions. Um, in the optimization process, the main objectives are uh, the, the reduction of the material volume and the joint clusters. Uh, circular solid sections are assumed for the structure and the top layers are uh, remain fixed during the optimization, while the bottom uh, layer vertices can move along the surface normal. This process was applied for all the nine different surface variable uh, configurations that we saw. And looking at the results, we can see that there's a high diversity in the um, generated solutions. Overall, uh, surfaces in the bottom row, which have a higher uh, curvature, seem to perform better and with the results being more clustered, while surfaces in which the ratio of the ellipse and the inclination angle is higher tend to have more dispersed uh, results. Two of these configurations are studied in more detail. And we can see in the first one, which, is, which has a circular base, that despite the diversity of the results, the higher performing uh, configurations, they all have a uniform depth, which is what was expected given the embedded symmetry of the starting geometry. So this helps us uh, validate the, the efficiency of the method developed. Looking at the other uh, surface, however, we can see that Again, there's a high diversity in the generated configurations and their performance. But in this case, we have uh, different families of geometries being developed uh, that, that all perform uh, both structurally and uh, in terms of fabrication. So in this case, the designer can choose which type of structural depth uh, works better for the specific project and uh, remain sure that the selected configuration still performs well for structure and fabrication. So building on, this, uh, on these findings, and if we uh, reference them back to uh, the different types of services studied, we can see that we can start developing a library of uh, efficient space frame configurations that all perform well for both structure and fabrication. And this helps the this enables the designer to do a performance-based exploration of the design space so they can 
select the appropriate solution that works best for their project and still remain sure that it performs well, both structurally and for fabrication reasons. And so overall, this approach enables us to uh, promote, uh, to generate diverse solutions that perform well both for structure and fabrication and in this way facilitate the wider application and practice. Thank you very much. <laughs>